Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. It has been a whirlwind of a couple weeks. I can't even tell you how exhausted I am. If you move around a lot, you know. I mean, if you honestly move in general, like move houses in general, it is, oh my gosh, I never wish it on anyone. Moving is one of the worst things you could do. It's so, I hate it. I just, I hate it. Thankfully, we're not moving across the country this year. We are, we just moved like a couple streets down like instead of being in like a townhouse we're in an actual house like it was a great move like great choice just everything is much much better than where we were it's just the process of moving and with that I had no time to read no time to even create like a TBR list like I have no idea what I'm going to read next this book was has just been in my my uh, Kindle for a long time and I have the physical book And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to read it really quick, like just to have a book to do an episode. And I just, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. And I am going to say that I don't want you to put a lot of thought into this book as well, which we will get into. And that's why I'm here is I will read the books that y'all don't want to or have time for so that we can talk about them. And yeah, just lots of thoughts and feelings for this episode. But yeah, no TBR. It is TBA. Watch my Instagram because after this episode, I'm going to just scour through TikTok, scour through the Kindle app, just scour through everything to figure out what I want to read for the next month. I forgot to do a TBR for May. It just coincided with a lot of different things but I am going to post one about June I really want to get back into my routine it just moving also throws off routine like I don't know where anything is we're still unpack. I mean it's only been like a week but like we're still unpacking I could barely find my podcasting stuff because when I pack I'm like oh yeah I'm definitely gonna remember this I'm going to remember where all these these things are no absolutely not I have the worst memory And so I'm surprised I was even able to find any of this stuff and that there's an episode in general. It just, yeah. So I found all my things. I'm hoping to create a routine again and kind of, you know, get everything solidified so that I can have like good books and solid episodes coming. And not to say that this isn't a solid episode. It's just a book that I don't support. (laughs) So... Do you want to get into this? I think we should get into this. The first thing that I'm going to say is that I am very disappointed in Jennifer Armentrout. And this isn't going to be like a diss episode or like, oh, let's talk about how bad this book is. I mean, essentially, yeah, there's going to be a lot of that, but it's not going to be like, oh, this is the worst thing I've ever read. It's not. It's not the worst thing that I've ever that I've ever read. I just miss her old writing. I really do. I miss her old books. Like my best friend, Caitlin, she is, she just finished the ACOTAR series. And I'm so, so happy that she is getting into like reading fantasy, reading smut, like reading all of this. She's actually listening to it, but I I don't even care because it's like she's getting into this. So she liked ACOTAR. She hated Feyre, which we all do. Um, she had a hard time. She likes Nesta. We all hate Elaine. She is not a great character. And I kind of read along with her and followed along so that we could like talk about it. And so once she finished, she's like, okay, what, what am I listening to next? What are we going to do? And I need to create like a more solid list for her, but I recommended the blood and ash. I was like, read the first three books because they're actually like pretty solid books. And if you don't want to read the the next two, I think there's even going to be another one after that. If you don't want to read them, just listen to the podcast because I read them for the podcast. Because that's the thing, like Jennifer Armentrout's old books, like her Apollyon series, her Onyx or her Obsidian, like her Alien series, like her old books are so good. They're so good. I recommend them to everyone. But it wasn't until like, 
even the the first couple books of like with uh with the gods um having to do with uh like nictos and everything though the first book was really good the second book was okay it there was just like a pivotal moment where her books just declined like she just wrote them to maybe write them like it was just elongating the story it felt like she didn't really know where she wanted to take the story she didn't know how to end it and it just was very disappointing and frustrating because it was like the blood and ash series is one of my most favorite series but it's just like the first three books and so I recommended those to her and then I need to figure out where I want to take her from there Um, But I figured this gives me a little bit of time for her to see like a different side of fantasy that is a little bit more spicier than Sarah J. Moss, but still like within the fantasy. So yeah, that's kind of an update, like with not really an update, but just like my thoughts and feelings on Jennifer Armentrout's books, which I I had hopes for this. I'm not going to say I had high hopes for this series, The Fall of Ruin and Wrath, which is what we're going to be talking about. It's not even a series yet. It's just this first book. I wanted to like it. I went in with an open mind. I was like, okay, this is going to be a new series. Like the, the back seemed really interesting, like the little summary. And it really didn't match like the the summary on like the first page didn't really match what I actually read it in a in a way it was a very elongated situation like there wasn't a lot of plot there was spice of course it was very spicy but the plot really doesn't progress it's more focused on the spice like it it happens over like the span of a month, I want to say, but nothing really made sense. And if you're like, okay, I, I really don't want to read this. I just want to know about it. That's why I'm here because I read it and I'm going to tell you all about it. So it's like spoilers, like everything is spoilers because it just, I want you to understand my frustration with it. And the only way to do that is just just to really tell you about the story. And, like, the premise is interesting. Like, the characters could have been interesting. Like, if maybe the timeline she needed to change or the pacing was different, like, she needed to add a lot more into the pacing and the actual plot and the events that happen because I think it would have been way better if that happened. But... It really didn't. So I I don't really know what these creatures are. I think they're gods. I, I don't know if they're a type of angel. I really don't know. It doesn't go into a lot of detail of that. But there are these, I guess, categories or tiers of people. The first one, like the very high up, they're called dominions. So they are created from the earth, like created, created as protectors. And uh, I guess these are like the princes and the princesses over the six territories. There is a king. We don't know like anything about him. We just know that he is not very sympathetic to like the lowborns. And there's like this rebellion group called the Iron Knights that we learn about that the king is like, oh, if there's a city or anything that just has rumblings that they could be associated with them, just demolish them. I don't care. And that's all we know about the king. Like literally, that's it. Um, We only know two of the prince's names, which I thought was weird. Like, why would we not know any of the other princes? Like, even the people, like, in the communities only know two of the princes. One of them is Prince Rainer, which we don't know why we know his name, but we know Prince Vistras because he, I guess, is the right hand of the king, and he's the destroyer. He's like the evil one, apparently. We do actually know one of the princesses, Princess Visalia, because she is the one that is rebelling with the Iron Knights. But that's it. That's all we know. We don't find out anything about her, about really these Iron Knights, just that they're rebelling. 
and they're coming for this town and like it just that that's it i'm i'm not even joking like that's all we know about them and so there's yeah there's the dominion who are like an upper tier of the highborn and the highborn are of course like the better than everyone they essentially are like the i don't know the kings of the land or like the the governors like they're just the higher up people and then there's the celestia which they're created by a lowborn and a dominion getting together so i don't know if a celestia is a type of highborn i don't know it really was so unclear and then it sprinkled in that there's some starborn which this is when a star falls when a mortal is born and they become divine. Honestly, I don't know. That is all the book says. Like, not much detail. Like, literally, I'm not even joking. Like, this is it. And then there's the lowborn, which we know they're like the lower tier, the lower class. Like, they treat them like garbage. It's kind of done in a lot of books, so... We know about the lowborn. Uh, there is like the main female character. Her name is Callista. We call her Liz, and we it it opens when I think she's like maybe ten, maybe twelve. Her and Grady. So they're in an orphanage and they take care of each other. It doesn't say how they met. It just says that she had an intuition about him being a good person, so she just latched onto him, and that's it. That's all we know about their background. I guess they've been going from town to town as orphans. We don't learn about her parents. We don't learn about his parents. Nothing. Okay, great. So they're in this orphanage and two highborns come by. And apparently they're looking for someone. So they, they look at all the different orphans' eyes. There's one highborn that comes over to her, notices her eyes, but doesn't say anything. He kind of does like a, a shushing motion. And then he tells the other highborn like, hey, everything's clear. So they're like, oh, okay. Um, at 16, they come to Archwood, which Arkwood, Archwood, I'm just going to say Archwood Manor. Um, which the Baron, his name is Claude, he could see what Liz could do, which basically Liz could, she has a very, uh, like an intuition. She could sometimes see the future. She has to touch someone and she can usually see like their future or if something bad is going to happen to them. She gets these premonitions, like she just has this kind of like sixth sense. So he's like, hey, I will take care of you, both you and Grady. Come to my estate. You can help me out in these situations. Done. She's like, okay. So she becomes his paramour or his courtesan, and I have no idea what that means. Like, there's hints that maybe she's like, I don't know, services him, but then there's, like, hints that she doesn't, and then... It doesn't come out to say like she services other people or like it is so unclear. I can't even emphasize that enough that this book is so murky with details that I don't know what's what. So she is able to help Claude and read people's thoughts and their future snippets, just all of that. So she becomes an asset to him. So she's around 20, 21 now, and she overhears Claude's, some of his guards saying that they captured a highborn and that they have this plan that they're going to like kind of harvest him or use him for ransom, blah, 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 blah. So she gets this feeling, an overwhelming feeling that she needs to find him. So she goes to where these guys say that they he is held at this like blacksmith. She comes in. This guy's like strapped on this table. He's had his eyes gouged. He has this certain type of dagger that's in his heart. He's like stabbed in his arm, like just bad, but he's like alive. And so she's like, okay. So she like 
takes out these, the daggers and he is instantly like a lot like awake and tackles her and is like trying to kill her. And she's like, no, no, no. Like I, I'm a good person. Like I want to help you. And his eyes are already like regenerating. Like his limbs are just, he's just regenerating. And it sounds really creepy. And she instantly knows that he is the one that helped her like hide as a child. Like he was the one that came with that other person and he could kind of sense what she was and then like whis or said like shush to her. So she's like thought about him over the years and she's like, oh, like this is why I felt to come and save him because he saved me when I was a child. Like from what? We don't know. Um, but she's like, I want to help you. And here's the thing is that she never tells him throughout this whole book that she was the child that he helped. Never. Like she tells Claude like later on, but she doesn't say this to this guy, this highborn. So he's gravely injured. She helps him to the a different room in the blacksmith and she helps like wash him off. Like she gets like stark naked and so does he. And she just like washes him. And apparently these highborns like feed off of pleasure. Even if they're like not doing the dirty, like still feeds off this ple- pleasure. So she's like washing him and he's like, healing because of this pleasure it's just it's weird um she he talks to her about how a part of them is that he's a dominion that he's not just a highborn that he's a dominion and that they are harvested so basically you can harvest anything of theirs and it helps with something So like if you take their blood and smooth it over a wound, it heals it pretty instant. Or if you take the blood and you sprinkle it on crops, like it's a fruitful harvest. Uh, Their teeth, you can put them in water and it creates these coins. Like he like listed all of these things, even talking about like his cum, which I'm like, "Mm, okay, really didn't need to know that, but whatever. Okay. Uh, It just helps with like fertility. Go figure. Um, but it just, it was weird. So I'm like, okay, why is he telling her these things? He doesn't even really know her. Um, the next day, like they kind of part ways the next day, she hears that a lot of Claude's guards are dead, that the, a couple of the, the places the like the artisan places, like the blacksmith. And I think like the bakery, they were like burned down and they're like, okay, like what is happening? Like, is this the Iron Knights? Is this like the kingdom? Like, what is this? They have no idea. And in her head, she's like, no, that was this guy. Um, So she runs into him again. Like, I don't know if it's that next day or the day after, but it's pretty soon. And he wants to get to know her. He's he's like intrigued. Um, And so he tells her that his name is Thorn. And, uh, she's like, okay, like, that's great. Like you're highborn, you're dominion. Um, and she starts to talk about like the prince of Vistas. I think that's his, let's see. It's yeah. It's like Prince Vistras. And he's like, oh, you already know my name. And it's like, oh, okay. So he apparently is this evil prince that causes destruction He's intrigued by her, like these mortals were able to like pin him down. Um, And yeah, he's just really intrigued. So the next day he comes to the Baron's house and he's like, hey, I need to talk to you about the king and about this city that you are kind of like the governor over. And the Baron doesn't really know, like the Baron Claude, that's who he is. Um, he doesn't really, he doesn't know that this is like the prince. He just thinks that he's like a high born and she's like, no, 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 no. Like this, this is who he is. And the prince, he's like, Hey, while I'm here, 
I want her to be my companion. Like what, like I'm here to help you because apparently the king had heard that this town, which we kind of already talked about, that this town was sympathetic to the, the Iron Knights and he wanted to destroy him. But now, now the prince is like, oh, I don't want to destroy the city because he likes Liss. And he's like, no, I want to help this city now. I want to help this town. So I have these armies that I'm going to go and get that um, that we can fight like the Iron Knights because they're heading here like to destroy the ports like this is what we're going to do. So he like spends a couple days at the manor like the estate to come up with these plans and let the Baron know. And yeah, in the meantime, him and Liz are getting like really, you know, spicy and everything. And he's just like really intrigued for her. So during this whole time, it's like kind of mentioned that there's like this supposed feast every year that the highborns kind of throw this party at every like every territory to show the lowborns that they are appreciative of them or that they care about them, that like they're their protectors. It's just basically a load of like poo poo. I don't think I've ever said that word. It's a load of crap that they say this because they like feast on them. Like I think that they like can drink blood or like I I honestly, I wish I knew the details. I wish I could tell you in more clarity about these things, but I just can't because it's not clear in the book. So he leaves, the prince leaves before the supposed feast. And Liz gets this weird feeling about the feast. She's like, something bad is going to happen. Like, I don't think we should attend. Like, this is not a great deal. Uh, Or like, this is not a great thing that's going to happen. And so she tells Grady and they are kind of at the feast, not really, when all of a sudden all these creatures show up that sounds like they're like a sort of like gargoyle that they are just ripping everyone to shreds, that one of Baron's, like, right-hand men, like, his cousin, like, sold Liss out because apparently it's unheard of to have her, like, powers. And so he sold them out to one of the other princes, to these other highborns. She doesn't know why. Like, she thinks that it's just, like, her powers. And so, yeah, everyone is getting, like, eaten and destroyed, and we still don't really know what's supposed to happen at these feasts, but everyone's dead now. And the prince is gone, like, the one that she's been talking to. He's gone. And so she is, like, in this room with one of the highborns and he's just like telling her all this information. And this mind you is at the very end of the book that we finally understand a little bit more about the world and about the situation. He mentions, which I thought this was so far fetched and I just, it threw me off that he mentions that there was a world before this one that had like technology and high buildings and like basically describing our world now, like, you know, mine and yours now that apparently there was like this big destruction and that's what awoke the highborn. And it was just weird. It was just a weird mention. And then this guy, he's one of the highborn. He was actually the other one that was with the prince at the very beginning. So the prince's name is Thorn also. Um, so it was Thorn and this other guy that went to the orphanage. And this other guy, he's evil, basically. Um, so he has her trapped in this room, telling her all this information. And he has asked her if... Thorn has mentioned it's called a ni- nitra nicora I have no idea and she's like yeah he kind of mentioned it a little bit and I asked him like what it was and he just said it is everything I'm like okay great it's everything and this guy basically says that as well like oh yeah it's everything like okay but tell me more information what is it finally we learn that 
For a dominion, there is a nice seraph bonded to them at birth, becoming their nichora, nichora, their connection to humanity. I'm like, this is so far over my head. None of this makes sense. And so I've been trying to think of the best way to describe it. So it sounds like these dominion are made of the earth. They're just created. They know everything about everything when they're born or awaken. And because they don't have like a connection to humanity, that's where these, I don't know, nice serif are. They come into play where they are human. It sounds like they're mortal. I don't know. That they're bonded to a dominion. So that they have this bond called the Nichora, which is that connection to humanity. So apparently, she is that to Thorn. And we don't find that out until like the end. Like literally the end. And so they've been trying to find her because... He apparently lost her. I don't know. Um, So they want to be able to, like, I don't even know, like, to be able to use her against him. And she's just been evading them this whole time. And so that's why they've, like, captured her. They're going to take her to the king. And she makes them take Grady with her. It just, I, I'm like struggling. I'm struggling here. Like this is, I don't think I've ever struggled so much with a book. Like I, I have like reading it, but to be able to explain it to you because I just don't understand it because there's not enough information in it. So they're taking him, her to the king, but then this guy dies. Like they separate from the group that Grady is in They're going towards the king. They want to throw people off. He dies, and then the prince shows up, and he's like, I'm here for you. Okay, great. Then what? That's it. Literally ends on that page where the guy dies, he shows up, that's it. Okay, Um, great. So what now? Like, it was such an awful way to end a book Where it's like, okay, why are you going to the king? Are you actually going to go to the king? Is Grady actually that important that you're going to go and try and save him? Like, what happens now that she knows that she's his Nikora? I don't even know how to say the word. Like, I'm, I'm not even joking. I wish that I could say to read this book, but it was kind of a waste of time. It really was. Like... I am for sure not going to pick up the second book whenever that comes out. I don't even know if it has a date to come out. I don't, I don't know. I, I just, y'all, I am just being so for real right now. Like I don't say this very often about books. Like I try and do episodes that I enjoy the book that I think other people will enjoy the book. But because this book was so confusing that they could have condensed, she could have condensed this whole story that has happened into like the first half and then had so many other things that are happening, like could happen in the second half, it would have made the book great. Honestly, like it had so much potential and it just, it didn't work. It was a waste. Like I am so upset that this really, I didn't have high expectations, which I said at the beginning, but it really didn't even reach my expectations at all. I feel so bad saying that because she probably worked hard on this. I don't know. Like it has the substance, like it has potential. It just really didn't hit it. It just really didn't. Like I, I don't even know. (laughs) I don't even know that's it. Those are my thoughts that if you want to read it, go for it. Like if you really are like, wow, is this book really that like bad? Like I kind of want to read it, go for it. But I will tell you, I, I won't be recommending it to anyone. I really won't. Like it just, I feel terrible because Jennifer Armentrout, I have been a huge fan of hers, huge fan. 
but it's just lately, which is what, what I talked about at the beginning. And I think others have noticed it too, that it's just really unfortunate. It really is that it's come to this. And I hope for future books that they are better and that she kind of, you know, gets her shit together and just has some more banger books. But for this one, it was a dud. It really was. So anyways, that's all I'm going to really say about this book because I don't think, I don't think it's worth any more time. Um, so yeah, take that as you will. Take all of this as you will. You don't have to believe me. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't believe me, but it's up to you. It's all to everyone's discretion, you know, like my standards are not other people's standards. Like it's all up to the reader. It really is. So take that as you will. Um, (laughs) But for me and my house, (laughs) we will not uh, read this book again. So anyways, I appreciate you guys. Definitely follow on Instagram because I will be posting my TBR on what I'm going to be reading this next month. Um, I'm really excited about it. There are some great books that are going to come out. I don't remember which ones they are, but I know that there are some that I'm really excited for. Uh, So yeah, stay tuned for all of that. And I'm sorry that this this episode um, just was about a book that wasn't great. But you know, there's wins and losses and and this is just a loss. So we'll just go from there. Um, But I appreciate you guys and wherever you listen to this episode, if you could rate and review, that definitely helps me out. And I will talk to you next week.